I made a list of the most spectacular things I've experienced in my life, total solar eclipses would be at the top. We all seen photographs of eclipses? Forget them. They don't tell you what's going on. So you're saying don't miss it. Don't Make miss sure it. Make sure you see this. It'll be 20 years before there's another one in the U.S. What part of the country will be able to see this upcoming eclipse? Well, this eclipse is going to come out of Mexico, cross into Texas, cross some major cities like Dallas as it does, and then move its way up. And so it's going to cross uh, Indianapolis and other Dayton is going to hit Dayton and on up into northern Ohio, into Canada, but also skirting the northeast as well before it goes out into the Atlantic Ocean. So if people don't live in that path of totality, should they bother driving to a place that's in that path? Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing compares to totality with so, what you see on the sun and what it does to people. I've been in uh, partial eclipses before, and of course, the two total eclipses I've been to and two annular eclipses, it got pretty exciting as it got deep, but nothing compares to totality. It, you, you have to experience it to understand what I'm saying. If you do take the effort to go into it, you'll thank me later. For a solar eclipse to happen, the moon has to pass in between the Earth and the sun, which happens every month. So why don't we see an eclipse every month? The phase when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun is called new moon. And it happens every, what, 29 and a half days, what we call the synodic period or synodic month. But the moon's orbit is tilted by just I think 5.1 degrees from the Earth's orbit around the sun. So the center of it can be as much as 5.1 degrees above where it needs to be when it's at new moon. And since the sun and the moon are only half degree across, well, most months it totally misses. And there are two periods a year for about a month where we have the nodes lined up with the direction to the sun. So uh, when there's a new moon, and there will be a new moon, you'll have at least two solar eclipses a year, typically three or four, but they generally would be partial for the whole Earth, not, not total. Yeah, so over time, that the ephemeris, those orbital parameters of the moon have gotten more precise, more accurate. And so because of that, we're able to predict these eclipses with yep. more accuracy. And also just think about from the biblical worldview, God upholds the universe by the word of his power. He does it so we can have that consistent repeatability over and over again. So it's a biblical worldview that gives us that basis for science, for being able to predict that the future will be like the past. The neat thing is about the Earth's moon, the sun is 400 times larger than the moon is, but the sun's also 400 times farther away. Which means that those 400-400 just compensate, so they're both about the same size, a, a half a degree. And the moon usually will just barely cover up the sun, making, number one, very spectacular eclipses and a very rare eclipses. One happens somewhere on the world about every year and a half, but usually it's the middle of Antarctica or in Siberia or, you know, Pacific Ocean. I've read several times that on average for a given location on the Earth, there is a total solar eclipse about every four centuries. Now, maybe thousands of years between, or it might just be a few years between, but that's the average. They're very rare and very spectacular, and this is the only planet which it matters because it's the only planet which there are beings like us to appreciate that fact. That's, right. that's what I mean by God being an engineer, to engineer how this happens, and also to be an artist. It shows that uniqueness that we have on the Earth and being the only planet and just shows God's design yep. that we have. And there aren't Martians out there that are appreciating eclipses. It's just us yep. here on Earth. The Earth is special and we are special. And God, I think, has treated us with this. Yeah. So speaking of that, how do you, <clears throat> secular scientists, explain the phenomena of solar eclipses on Earth? Coincidence. Just just that's it. Just the way it happened to turn out to be. And that's, given, that's it. To me, that's not very satisfying. Yeah. Given their naturalistic beliefs, I mean, that's basically all they got, right? Is it safe to look at the eclipse? Who said that? Well, you're, you're supposed to wear these special glasses that they have, and I ordered a bunch of these. And you need to go to a reputable dealer of these and the special kind of filter. What? I can't read it. Would you read yeah, it? Yeah, make sure you get one of the, the filters. It has to have an ISO 12312-2. That's the requirement. Right. Three things you need to worry about. Number one is blocking out all the visible light. And these things, I can't see a thing through them. I can't either. But with the sun, you can. I've tested these out already. I've used them, of course, at the annual eclipse. Two other things is that not all filters that can block out the visible light will block out the ultraviolet and the infrared. Yeah, so welding glasses. I don't recommend that because the most dense ones they have, forget the numbers for arc welding, mm. it will be dim enough that you can see. But the problem is it may allow ultraviolet through. And you won't feel that. You won't have a sensation like a little visible light, but it can do damage. So yeah. I, I recommend that you go with these kind of glasses. Find a reputable dealer that will handle these. It's very dangerous to look at the partial phases without protective filters like this. But when totality comes, you can take they, them off. they come off. I'll have somebody designated to do a countdown for us to tell us, okay, three, two, one, look, look. And then at the end, 
You have a one minute warning, 30 second countdown to zero. Don't look anymore because it's quite dangerous to, to look at the, uh, the little tiny bit of the photosphere coming through. To recap, during the partial phases, wear those glasses. <laughs> during totality, make sure you take them off. Yep. And then as we go into the partial phases again, put on those glasses. But eclipses are party events. You won't be wearing your glasses all the time. You'll put them on, look up there, take them off, put them up again. Just check the progress. Yeah. It'll be a party atmosphere. I would suggest during totality, the binoculars would help. Mm-hmm. It will magnify what you see. The corona is huge. It's several degrees across, and telescopes just aren't wide enough to capture that, usually. I don't recommend telescopes unless you have a very wide field on them. Mm-hmm. And be sure you know how to use them. It's not the time during totality to try to figure out how to use the telescope. Yeah. So you mentioned a little bit earlier about some of the conditions that we can expect during totality, like you know the deep twilight, the dusk. What are some other conditions we can expect? Well, as you approach totality, you'll notice it'll get dimmer. Outdoor lighting with light sensors on them, they will come on. If there are any insects out there, they, they will start doing, doing their business. Birds, the daytime mm-hmm. birds will start to go roost. Some night animals will come out. We saw a bat in 27 17, a few minutes before totality came out for a while. We were in a horse pasture in 2017, and I didn't really notice what they were doing as totality approached, but as totality ended, they started running around and winnowing. It's like, I guess, morning routine. They're excited about the new day or something. Also, another thing to look for is you can put a white sheet of some sort, maybe a piece of poster board, something big, hopefully, on the ground. And if it's clear, really clear that day, you'll see these shadow bands. And they've been described like snakes going across the ground. There are these bands about this wide and they move about that fast and they move in the direction of the uh, shadows moving. It starts out a few minutes before and then after totality. I must confess the two total eclipses I went to, I did not see shadow bands. Uh, we looked for them. The, I think the problem was we had some thin clouds. Which plants are we going to be able to see? <clears throat> yeah, well, the uh, Venus and Jupiter will be the uh, the big, big show stoppers. Venus will be the brightest star in the sky that day during totality. It will be to the right of the sun and Jupiter will be to the left of the sun. They'll be easy to spot because they're so bright. Jupiter's the second brightest star. It has to be a clear sky, right? So make sure uh, people go out and find a spot that's going to be clear, not as many clouds. This eclipse will also occur in a part of the sky where there aren't a lot of bright stars. I've already checked out the location. Orion will be off to the left quite a bit. And there are a bunch of bright stars associated with Orion. People down in Texas, it's going to be a little tougher. They're going to be real low in the sky, but for us, it's going to be higher in the sky. So I'm going to be looking for Orion as well. I saw it in 2017. I saw Orion very nicely. So circling back to the start of our conversation, this moment of totality really is quite a moving experience and it, it can be a spiritual one as well. So how do these events draw you closer to God? As I said, it, it tells me that God's both an engineer and an artist. I, I told you that many people celebrate by shouting and singing and doing all sorts of things. And uh, people that know me well are shocked to learn that to me, I'm dumbstruck. One I of the few I moments where Danny's not talking. I don't say anything. We can make myself tickets for that. If you're in tune to God, then you, you see his handiwork here. And to me, it's a very spiritual sort of thing, and it should be. If there's something wrong with you if you're not moved by it. Especially as a Christian, right? And like yeah. we were talking about. And so what purpose do you think God had in mind when he was designing these beautiful solar eclipses for us? Well, again, I, I love Psalm 19.1. I graduated from Christian high school, and I put Psalm 19.1. They wanted a verse for each of us in the yearbook. Mm-hmm. Put that in there, and they probably wondered at the time, why? That's a weird verse. But then when they found out I became an astronomer, it made perfect sense. The heavens do declare God's glory. And this is echoed in Romans 1, 19 and 20, where it says that, the world around us tells us there's a creator and it's very powerful so that men are without excuse. And so when I see something like this, I see the handiwork of God. I see there's an artist. I see there's an engineer. I see that that he's cared for us very deeply, far beyond just the aesthetics, of course. These sorts of things are telling us that there is a creator and it behooves us to find out about him and the fact that he's a holy and righteous God, which we can't find by looking at a total solar eclipse. I wish we could, but we can't. But we can find that reading scripture and we find out in scripture that God is holy, righteous, and we are not because we're sinners. Sin brought into the world through the Garden of Eden, through the through the disobedience of Adam. And as the New Testament tells us that sin entered the world by the disobedience of one man and death by sin. So we're all into that curse, but uh, God on his end infinite love and mercy for us provided a way of escape. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be the perfect sacrifice for us. And so if people see this eclipse, they watch this program and they don't come to grips with the fact and reality that sin separates us from God, there's only one way to bridge that, then they have missed the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know that, Rob? That is the whole point is, are we right with God? The creator who made the billions upon billions upon countless number of stars he thinks about us he thinks about us creatures made in his image and he provided a way of salvation for us here on earth the one that named all the stars we don't have to worry that he's going to forget about his children